And this is what the thread was doing. This would wind around the needle. Weird. I don't even know how it's possible, but it does. So that's what was happening. And it was all because... do some uh, sewing stuff today with the Sailrite. Started uh, making window covers. I've already used the Sailrite quite a bit to make my interior cushions and they came out real well and I love this little Sailrite thing. But now I need to move on to bigger and better stuff for the reasons that I bought the Sailrite. Stuff that's heavier. Canvas and Sunbrella and whatnot. So I started to make window covers because the window covers are going to be the primary way to keep out water or at least the first defense in keeping out water from the windows because my windows are the old Taiwanese trawler leaky tiki windows and even when they're sealed up right they have a tendency to leak if the wind comes in from a certain way let me just tell you what happened here I was making these machine started kind of clunking a little bit I noticed it but I just kept going and I wasn't sure exactly why it was clunking and then I broke a needle and then I started I put another needle in it thinking that maybe I just tugged on the fabric too hard or something and it worked a little bit again and then I uh, started clunking a little bit so I just stopped and pulled it apart started trying to figure out what was wrong with it and was able to figure out what was wrong with it so pulled this apart I'm gonna show you the part but the I guess what I can't I don't remember the exact names of these but this piece right here the outer piece, not not the inner piece, but that pickup hook right there, uh, is damaged. And I know that I've seen a lot of videos where they tell you, um, you know, check it out, see if it's got a burr on it or something like that. If it's got a burr, then it can get a little finicky. And it's got more than a burr on it. It's got needle strikes on it that are pretty significant. So I was like, all right, well, I'm not even going to be able to burr that out a little bit. So... I need to investigate why that just happened because it wasn't just one, it was many. Um, and so I took that stuff apart, looked at it, tried to figure out what the hell was going on, and then actually finally figured out that this whole assembly here, let me see if I get a better look at it, was not secure. So if I, let's see, if I pull out on that a little bit, let me see if I can do it. See how that whole assembly comes out? Yeah, okay, so that whole assembly is moving. Well, why is it moving? It's got these little feet right here that uh, should secure that in place. It's surprising that that's all that holds it in. Um, but when it's working, this, there's a spring in here, and you put these on these little little feet so they, they pop out, rotate, and go onto these little feet, and it keeps it from, from coming out. Uh, and obviously it's enough to to make it work and secure it but this one right here is actually cracked let's see if we can you can see it right there so it's actually cracked I'm having a hard time getting this focusing let me see if I can get it better pull back a little let me try this there we go so you can see it's cracked now it's not cracked so much that it's all falling apart but it's cracked enough to where it's not really doing much to hold on this piece got on sale right website of course they have all the parts it's no problem they're not expensive I think the little feet are they sell each piece individually so the feet plastic feet are like $2.99 each or something like that don't quote me you can get just the screws and inside here is a spring so they sell each piece I got several I don't know how often these break. This machine is an older machine, so I don't know how often these break. But I got several replacements. I think I got two or four of these. I got a couple extra springs and a couple extra screws. In addition, I got a new, uh, this piece right here. I got two of those. And that is like the lower needle pickup. I can't remember the exact name of it. I'm sure you guys that have the sale rights know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, and then I got a few other things too. I, this light, I think I got a light. I don't even remember what I ordered. But this light works good, but it's too big. And obviously this was put on here kind of pre-LEDs. So I got one of their fancy little LEDs and a couple other things. So let's see what I got. I don't even remember. Let me put this in a, uh, 
holder here. We got our sail right box. I also got some new needles. All right, let's see what's in the box. Cause actually I don't even honestly remember. I was doing the work on the, uh, the uh, window covers kind of late at night. So I went back inside and just ordered a bunch of stuff. Late night shopping on sale right website. It's probably not good. So let's see what we got. We have, I love sale right. They're such a good company. I ordered this and they had it shipped to me in no time flat. I did get the swing away binder. I have a binder. I have this exact same binder. Uh, not exact same, but exact size. So it's not on there right now, but the binder that I have is not a swing away binder. And it worked, worked fine. Uh, except for when I started having these problems. And you, you quickly see the value of a swing away binder when you can't complete <laughs> a particular uh, binding or webbing seaming the edge or whatever put it on the edge uh, because if you don't finish it and you have to get back into it that swing away binder is worth its weight in gold because I had to unscrew it and get everything set but with a swing away binder it just uh, seemed to work so I went as I was shopping I went on the website and watched this guy use the binder I noticed it was different than the one I, I had and uh, it should work a little bit better. So here's the little feet. That's what was broken. So I got several of those. More feet. I don't want to... Nothing worse than um, being in the middle of a job and having to stop. So I got enough spare parts, hopefully. Some more washers. Uh, there's little screws that goes in there. See what other small parts we got here. There's the spring. That spring is inside of these feet. So, uh, and it won't work well without the spring. The spring provides the tension. One stop shot. Oh, this is uh, this is part of the light mount. So, and then here I got. This is called the. Let's see. Shuttle jib hook for ultra feed and leather works. So they sell it by the model number. I think I have an ultra feed, but hopefully I gotta double check and it's the same. So that is the problem. I had a bunch of needle strikes that were all the way down in here. Um, so this is the part that I mainly need along with those feet. So I got two of these again because I wanted to uh, never be without parts again. I think this is for the um, adding the light which I bought. This is the mount for the light and this is the light that I purchased. Let's see what it looks like. This will be a lot smaller than the uh, than the one I got on there now. I love LED lights they just work so well. So this thing's magnetic and this this will be this will clear or uh, clean up a lot of space. Let's see, I got some binding. And then what else did I get here? No. Marking tools variety pack. I really should have ordered the monster wheel. So, this is just various marking stuff because I, I was using various things that I had in the garage to mark and it's not stuff that really should be used on fabric so I got this so I am going to take these parts and put them in the machine and video that in case you know that's helpful hopefully to somebody all right so hopefully this works out hopefully it's useful to somebody filming is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes but I do this mainly because, uh, so here's the, I do this mainly because I was look, always look online for stuff and there were many times where I went and I didn't find what I needed. So you can see that that thing doesn't even put pressure on it. This one's nice and tight. You can see it's on the spring and it, it kind of snaps into place. So, and this was deceiving. Like if you just looked at this, you wouldn't notice it. But 
just kind of tug on it a little bit. If it doesn't have a tremendous amount of spring pressure, I can't even move this one. Barely. It has a lot of spring pressure. This one actually isn't even resting. I can push it in. So as a result, this whole side right here was not being held in. And if that's not being held in, then the hope for all these pieces to be aligned and, and good is, is slim. So let's pull that out. So let's just pull the cover off and get the guts out. And I'll actually show you the, uh, so let's see if you can see this. So you can see I had several needle strikes and this all came within a very short period of time. Let me see if I can even get a better. This all came within a very short period of time. It's amazing that these needles can take a beating metal to metal like that and not break until uh, after a while. But obviously it messed up the needle because it was making a thump, thump, thump as it was penetrating the fabric because the needle probably had a, you know, it wasn't sharp and penetrating, probably just forcing its way through. So that is the old one. Let's take a look at the new one. We'll uh, open this one up. Let's hold these side by side here. Let's see. Hopefully that is good. This should work really good. Are these the same? Yep, these are the same. Okay. I'm going to try to burnish that out and see if I can do it and save it for a spare, but there we go. All right, so there's that. Now they also tell you on the web, on the sale right website to take a look at this. It's a little beat up, um, but I think that's okay. You can see that it's kind of. Well, I think that's okay. Let me put this back in. It goes at the top. Okay, so I'm gonna. I'm going to put this one in place to hold it. So, and then you can see how this is. And then when I move this one over, the broken one, it doesn't even help. It's not even working. So, let me just get a screwdriver. Hopefully I can get this in there. So, there is a spring. So to get this back on, you got to apply a little pressure because you have to fight the spring pressure a little bit. I don't know how tight you need to tighten it. I think the uh, threads bottom out to the mounting hole and then it, so this is much tighter. Now when it's on there, it just snaps in. So now this thing should be nice and secure, which it is. Wow, look at that. Amazing. Stole that right in there. And then let's see if I can get it threaded. What happened when I was doing this, it would uh, curl around the needle and then cut the thread was what was happening. So I got to... Now, I tried, as I was fixing this, I also adjusted the uh, tension. So, surely I'm going to have to adjust the tension. And I suppose we should be ready to sew. The spring tension may be not right. Let's see. Actually, everything seems to be feeding smooth. Let's take a look. Nope, not quite. I think I need a little more tension. Let's, let's give it a shot. I think my tension is way down. Yeah. Let me get a different piece of fabric.
So I think it's this last one here. That looks, I got the tension way up from where it was. So this one. I think that's about right. I think the knot's supposed to disappear. Like you just see the stitches. I think that's about right. It runs much better and I can continue with uh, making my window covers but I just wanted to show the repair to that which is a very minor repair obviously but it's just something to look out for and this is what the thread was doing this would wind around the needle weird I don't even know how it's possible but it does so that's what was happening and it was all because this was broken allowing this cover to move out which would allow the uh, this pickup piece to uh, to move out and probably strike the needle and then as a result it struck that the needle struck that and then it was all kinds of problems from there so don't forget to check and it you know that crack was like right there I wish I could where is that piece here it is let me show you the crack. It's very subtle here. So you can kind of see the crack. Let's see. There you can see it right there. And if I were to lift out on it, you can see the crack. But it was all intact. It kind of looked like everything was where it was supposed to be. But it caused big problems and some damage. So this is now working again. And we'll see how far I get on the window stuff. And then I'll, I'll put that, the finished product, in this video as well. Maybe even fitting on the boat. We'll see. The other thing that we're going to get to soon is the aft top, I guess. It's going to be a canvas top. Um, but it's going to have some, uh, some structural rigidity to it to where you can lift the dinghy up on a block and tackle um, on the aft arch. So it will be arched. Um, it'll be made out of aluminum. I've got some aluminum up there. I think that's one and a half inch schedule 40 or 80. I don't remember which, but it should be plenty strong. Um, and then I have some more aluminum over here, which is, I gotta get, I gotta get at least twice as much as what I have now, but, uh, that is one and a quarter inch and that will be the crossbows. Um, and then we'll be rolling it for the arch on this roller, which works great. Um, I've used it a couple times to make my outside canopy. And I couldn't remember if I had bought these, but I got the additional rollers down here. And I just purchased the pipe, not, not knowing if I had the rollers, but I do have the rollers already. So uh, I'll be using this uh, awesome machine stand with the roller on it. Um, to roll the pipe into arches and then connecting it via you know pads welding it on pads and I've got these too I got the, I've got a lot of the stuff at there's a local uh, um, recycling place near my house that you know all the uh, everybody does recycling um, and a lot of people do business by recycling so that whatever they can get their hands on they recycle it so they have this room back there where you can go and everything that people try to recycle, uh, they put in that room. Everything that people try to recycle, they get paid for scrap value only, but the people that do the recycling know that this stuff is much more valuable. Um, so they put it in that back room for sale and it's very cheap. Uh, like these were eight bucks each and these were... Uh, four bucks each so these are polished aluminum mounting plates uh, and these are mounting pads and these are additional mounting pads these are really on their catalog they're made for footrest but you can use them for whatever you want they just swivel and you can pin them you can see that they could be pinned there and I think these were in recycled because they were misdrilled but all I need to do is redrill a hole for a QD pin to go in there these are actually outrigger plates. Um, I don't know why they were recycled. Oh, I saw these in there for sale, and these were four bucks each. 
for a set of two. And these are finished. Like, when you pull these out, these are really nice. They look like this. They're finished aluminum. Of course, I'm going to muck it all up by welding it. I have a uh, Miller, Miller Matic 211 Auto Set MVP. But I have a spool gun with this. It's back there. Um, but so you can weld aluminum so it's not going to be the pretty TIG but you can get it to look pretty good with a little bit of technique so we'll be doing a aft canopy made out of aluminum pipe bent and rolled uh, with these pads we'll see what hopefully I have enough to do everything I really should because there's going to be four main mounting pads and then probably an additional two that go up to the aft hard top and then the next project, just to keep you up to date, will be this, uh, as I showed you before, this flow scan. We'll go in the fuel system. That will actually be first. 